Hey everybody, welcome back. In this very exciting video, we're gonna have our crack at the very first tier one starting point machine on Hack the Box. That was a mouthful. But seriously, this is gonna be a really fun one that is going to give us some insight into how to persist, how to do something and fail at it, or maybe not fail, but not find anything and keep going. Up until now, a lot of the boxes have been pretty easy to the point we kind of like, one of the first things we did just worked. And this is gonna be a little bit different. So let's jump right into it. There's a lot to cover in this one. All right, so here we are inside of Hack the Box. Now let's go ahead and spin up our machine. This is, again, we're working on appointment, which does appear to be a Linux machine. So we'll go ahead and give it a second and then we'll jump right into it. All right, so it does appear we got our IP address. Let's copy that to our clipboard and let's head over to Pwnbox. If you're using a Linux VM like Kali Linux, Parrot Linux, something like that, in a virtual machine on your laptop or desktop, you'll open it up now and make sure you're VPNed into Hack the Box. From there, let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Let's run our normal nmap scan. So we'll do nmap-v-sc for scripts. Uh, I like to do dash n to disable DNS resolution, just to speed things up a little bit with the scan. Um, then we'll specify our IP address. We'll just paste that in there and hit enter. All right, so the scan was pretty quick. Um, again, we always wanna be careful about that, right? We see that we have one port here return, port 80. Let's not assume always that that's the only port. So I always recommend running that same scan with a dash P dash, such as that. That way we can cover all ports. So we can run that in the background if we want. That's perfectly fine. Um, in our case, though, let's investigate this. So port 80 is open. The first thing I like to do is just go to a browser and let's open up Firefox and see what we can do here. Let's scoot that over a little bit. Okay. So we'll throw in the IP address here if we can paste, which we can't, so we will retype it. 129.64.35, okay. So we're navigating to the page just to get a kind of the feel of what we're working with here. Um, it appears to be some kind of login page. I'm not sure what application this is. Um, one of the things I like to do personally while I'm here uh, is go view the source. So we'll right click, go to view page source. I like to just skim through it and look for anything that might be helpful. Uh, maybe versions, software versions, uh, anything hard coded, that kind of stuff. Uh, we do have the form, which one thing we might want to keep in mind, we have the name here of the fields. So we have username is the name of the actual field. Uh, we have name here is password. These could be helpful later if we decided to try to brute force this login form. Those could be useful. Um, let's go ahead and close that, though. That's not really anything too interesting for right now. Uh, so I think the next thing that I want to do is actually run FUF. And this is essentially like GoBuster or DirBuster. It's just a way that we can kind of go through a word list and find any directories or files within the system, specifically in this case for our web server. So uh, to run it, what we're going to do is do FFUF, and then we'll go ahead and do a dash dash help just so you can see kind of the syntax. If I scroll up here, so this is ultimately a fuzzing tool, but it can be used to enumerate some of the, the paths, which is what we're going to do, the directories. Um, but ultimately, the format we're going to use is going to be basically this. So we're going to specify a word list. This word list will actually be like a, a directory listing file listing that we'll use. Um, we'll use one of the built-in word lists for that. And then obviously for dash u, we'll specify the URL of the web server, which is the IP address right here. So let's go ahead and start that. So we're going to do ffuf dash w for the word list. Uh, we'll use user share word list. I like using derby slash, I think it's common. Yep, we'll do common. I like that as just a starting point because it kind of hits all the major ones. Um, we'll then specify dash u and then the URL that we want to test with, HTTP colon colon or colon forward slash forward slash 10.129.64.35. Okay, now the important thing here with this fuzzing tool is you have to do a, you have to specify the actual word fuzz in the path where you want it to insert essentially the word list items, right? So if we just try this, watch, I'll just hit enter. 
See here it says keyword fuzz defined but not found in headers. So if we up arrow, what we need to do is add forward slash fuzz just like that. Let me expand this a little so you can see it a little better. There you go. So that's essentially the variable right there. It's saying wherever the word fuzz is in all caps here, it's going to insert an entry for every entry in our common.txt word list. And it'll try to reach out to that. So let's go ahead and, and start with that. That's kind of my starting point that I typically work with. Let's hit enter. All right, so I'm gonna stop this really quick. I wanna show you guys a trick. Uh, this isn't too bad, actually. We found a few things. So let's control C to stop that. Um, first, we have the name of the files or directories within this server, this web server. And we can also see the HTTP status codes. Uh, so we can see there's a 200. Um, that's the root file or directory right here, index.php. Same thing, we're viewing that here. So that makes sense. Um, we can see that we also have like HT password. Uh, we got a 403, so that's not really that helpful for us. So what you can do is if you get a lot of uh, a lot of stuff back that you don't really care about, you can actually do a dash FC for filter code, and then you can specify the HTTP filter or the HTTP code that you do not want to see. Uh, so in this case, I don't want to see 403s, just as an example. So we'll we'll do 403. And we could comma separate a list there as well if we wanted, but I'm good with that. So if I rerun it, you'll see here, it's a little bit cleaner of an output. So we get a couple of directories here. We have CSS, fonts, uh, images, that could be interesting, well, uh, eh, maybe. Uh, we have vendor, um, JavaScript is always potentially interesting, um, but overall, nothing really kind of jumps out. I would say I would definitely want to manually kind of explore some of this later. Uh, but nothing kind of right off the bat. So from here, we're kind of left with this login form. So if we just kind of recap, right, we did a scan of all of the directories. We didn't find anything, um, anything too interesting yet. We looked at the source code, didn't find anything too interesting yet. Um, so one of the things we can do at this point is we can actually give some SQL injection a try because we do know that this is a PHP page and more than likely, there is some kind of SQL database on the back end that PHP is calling to, to check your login credentials here. So that's one option we can go with. Um, now, I want to show you guys something, actually. I'm going to open up a page that talks a little bit about SQL injection. We're not going to go through how to do SQL injection from the start. It is a little bit of a lengthy topic, but I, I think I can help you guys kind of make it a little simpler for you. So let's check that out. All right, so here we are at w3schools.com. They have an excellent SQL section. Now this section we're looking at right here is SQL injection, as you can see here. But if you're really interested in learning SQL injection, I would recommend just going through the SQL lessons as a whole, because that's the hardest part is learning the syntax, how to do things in SQL. If you learn SQL on its own, SQL injection is gonna be a breeze for you. Um, that said though, this page is excellent. If we scroll down, I want to find an example to show you guys. Uh, let's see. So I'm just looking for a good uh, example. Okay, this is actually a good one. So this is very close to what we would see on a PHP web page as far as code that is reaching out to our database. So this is the actual SQL code right here. So you could actually run this on a SQL server and it will give you a result, right? Uh, if you had the data there, obviously. Now, in this case, it's saying select asterisk, which means all, so all records essentially from users where, this is the condition, name equals, and then we have an opening uh, quotation mark. So this right here is essentially our variable for username. And bear in mind, this is not from the virtual machine we're working with. This is just an example, probably pretty close though to what we're working with. So what it's essentially saying is whatever the variable is, we're gonna put it in right here. And then we're gonna say, and the password equals whatever is in this UPass variable as well, right? Now, in this case though, uh, what where it gets interesting is we can manipulate things here. Like, let's just say, for example, uh, I put in for the username here, I put in admin and then double quotes, right? So picture, I insert a double quote between these two right here. The way that this would be interpreted by the SQL server is, 
that hey i just gave a valid sql uh a sql query essentially so where that gets interesting is now we can start to break this a little bit and manipulate it and add sql to it and that's kind of the point that's what we're trying to go for there so i just wanted to kind of explain that a little bit um now what this means for us in this box let's go back to the viewer this means we can start entering things here in the login form. And our goal with trying to test for SQL injection, we're trying to test for something that breaks the query. That's our first goal. So we're trying to inject certain characters to find out what will break it. And that's the starting point for our new SQL statement that we're going to create if we're going to make like a lengthy new statement. Um, so let's, let's try a few things here. All right, and actually before we get to testing any kind of SQL injection here, I want to I want to show you guys an awesome resource. So if I click uh, open up a new tab, just head over to Hack Tricks, and I think you can just do SQL injection. Let's see, uh, yeah. So this first result right here, SQL injection. If we open this up, this is something I'm not going to go through in depth here, but I highly recommend you study this because this is an excellent article that kind of breaks it down. But First thing that it's talking about, which I'm probably very, very poor at explaining. Let's see if we can scroll down again. Um, entry point detection. So this is the first thing we need to do. We need to just give it some input here and see if we can break the SQL query, right? Like I mentioned. So if we go to login, uh, and by the way, these are all the kind of the inputs we can feed it just as some examples right here. So we have single quotes, back ticks, uh, double quotes, uh, double quotes with the, um, whatever you call it, uh, parentheses. That's it. That's the name. Wow. Uh, all right. So let's go to the login page. Um, admin is a pretty useful name. So let's, let's start with admin. So if we put admin, obviously, by the way, the one thing we haven't tried is just like admin, admin. Uh, let me not save that. Uh, you know, admin, password, variations of that, right? Admin, no password. Yeah, we can't even not put it at password. Password, you know, one, two, three. I don't know. Uh, so we're not having luck there. That's something we probably should have tried earlier, but obviously we're not having luck. So um, so continuing down the path of testing for SQL uh, injection, let's go ahead and do admin. So that will be the first part of our our uh, injection, right? Now we need some kind of character to break that query. And what we're looking for here is ideally, actually some kind of error would be wonderful, uh, but we might not always get that. So just be aware of that. Uh, so in this case, we could do like admin single quote, and we'd have to do something for the password. We don't really care what it is. I could just put random characters. We got nothing there, admin uh, double quotes. I'm just putting gibberish for the password. Uh, admin single quotes, parentheses, test. Okay, so we're not getting anything there. So ideally what I would do at this point is cycle through all of these, trying different inputs. And we're just trying to kind of poke at it until we find something that breaks it. Um, now, the other thing we can do is on top of doing all of those on their own, um, and it actually says here, in order to fix the query once we've broken it, uh, we can then input data so the previous query accepts the new data. So let me show you what that looks like. That would be kind of like, so this is this is the query we're saying ID equals one. So maybe that's like a username or something. The part we add is or one equal one. And this is just a comment right here. So this query right here will always evaluate to true, which means whatever is before it will be true. So if it's selecting all of the usernames, well, guess what? It will be true regardless of if we had you know, the proper password or whatever the case is. So that's one option. Um, the next option it says, let's scroll back down here. Uh, or you can just input your data and add a comment symbol at the end. Now, we don't know what kind of database is running on this server. So we have kind of all of the different types of comments. So for MySQL, you have a couple of different ways that you can do comments. Uh, so we'd want to try different variations of these. Uh, we have uh, Postgres SQL, uh, Oracle, SQLite, um, Microsoft SQL. So there's a few different variations. Now for us, MySQL is obviously, as you probably know, very popular. So I would start there uh, and just work down the list. So keep in mind, the goal here is to actually put some kind of text 
then one of these, then our comment, just to test to see if we can break, uh, essentially break the rest of the query. Because think about it, if the query says, um, select everything, asterisk, from users, right, where uh, username equal whatever our, our variable is for that we put in a text box, right, and password equals something, right? If in the username part of the query, we break it and we comment out the rest, it doesn't evaluate the password at all. So the query is true, we get a result without any password. That's kind of the goal. Uh, so in this case, what we would do, uh, and I will tell you, I've kind of gone through this manually and kind of sorted this out already, but uh, ultimately what we would want to do is do something like admin, uh, double quotes, and then, you know, uh, hashtag pound sign, whatever we want to call it. I'm sure there's a better name for it. I'm having problems with names of things. I might need to get my head scanned. Actually, to be honest with you guys, I had my head scanned for real like a month ago and doctor said it was all there. I don't know how, maybe their machine was defective. <laughs> so we're gonna, we got double quotes here. Our goal here with this is to break the query. This is to comment out the rest. So let's try password. Again, it doesn't really matter what the password is. Uh, we can do admin single quote, um, parenthesis, and then again, keeping in mind, these are kind of one unit right here. This is another variation of it. And, and again, if this doesn't work, we'll try different variations of those comments because we don't know what kind of SQL they're running, right? Um, so we'll just put gibberish there. That didn't work. Uh, let's try admin single quote, pound, and gibberish and we get the flag. So this is a really basic box because it just showed us that, hey, you got in, therefore you get the flag. Um, but before we wrap this up, let's go back. I wanna, I wanna try something else. What if we didn't do admin? Because I know someone's wondering that. I would wonder that. Uh, what if it was just, you know, test user, right? Gibberish for the password, login. Didn't work, right? So it worked in our case, what was it? Um, that, something like that, gibberish. Let's try maybe just test, something like that. Yeah, so that one actually worked. So now I, now I wanna see the test user because that was kind of weird, it didn't work. Uh, let's try gibberish. That That's kind of interesting. I, hopefully you guys saw it, test worked, admin worked, but not test user. Either way, the point is, the input did matter because we were correcting the SQL statement. So there is a user admin, and by adding this code, right, by adding uh, single quote, pound sign, we essentially commented out the rest of the SQL query where it said, check for this username equals whatever, and password equals, you know, password, which is the name of this field right here. Um, so that said, that's one way to do it. Now, I wanna show you guys another way there's actually a tool we could use that would help us automate some of this. We're doing it the manual way. We're checking for SQL injection manually, but there is an easier way to do it. Although you probably should study up and, and learn the, the manual way too. So let me show you that. Now that's using a tool called SQL map that will automate some of this. It is a little tricky to learn how to use it, but let me give you a quick example of how this could help us here. All right, so to run SQL map, let's go ahead and go into our terminal. We'll do SQL map dash dash help as usual to figure out the syntax. Let's expand this. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. So let's go up. Okay. The very top. Okay. So we're definitely going to need URL. So we'll definitely need to specify a URL. We can see the format here. Um, that ours will be probably index.php here. Um, dash dash data, we'll need to specify what field we want to target. Uh, so we'll need to specify that as well. I will also specify level and risk. So we'll do like level five, risk three. This is important because it says here, these options can be used to customize the detection phase. Basically, this is how aggressive is it going to be? So I'm going to make it very aggressive. So let's go ahead and build this out. So we'll do SQL map dash U. Our URL is going to be 10.129.64.35 slash index.php. We'll do dash dash data. Then we'll do a space. I'll do a single quote here. Um, I believe we could also use double quotes there as well. Um, now here is where we actually wanna specify the names of these fields right here. 
which if you recall, we know because we looked at the source. So if we go back to view source on that page, we scroll down, uh, we see name right here is username, name right here is password. And we see enter password, enter username. So that's how we know we're in the right place. So we definitely want name, username, password equals whatever. So this is where we can specify that right now. So the way we need to specify it is we'll do uh, the name of the first field, we'll do username equals, and I'm going to specify admin. So we'll, we'll repeat it with that same username. Then we can do an and symbol. Now, this is technically something we could get real easily uh, from something like Burp Suite. Uh, if we analyze the HTTP requests and responses, we would see this kind of format there. We haven't really gotten into Burp Suite yet in this series. We will eventually, but uh, for now, just and symbol right there. Um, then password, that's going to be again the name. It's not actually the word password. We're specifying password as the field name. So we'll say password equals, and we need to specify something here. I'll just put like test pass one, two, three, something like that. We'll end it with another single quote here. We'll do dash dash level five dash dash uh, risk, I think three. So that's the command. Now let's go ahead and run that and see what we can get. And fair warning, this can take a little bit of time. Um, okay, so we got right here, uh, looks like the backend database is MySQL. Do you wanna skip test payload specific for other databases? Yeah, we do. We don't wanna test for Microsoft SQL anymore. We know it's it looks like it's SQL. So let's say, uh, yes, we wanna skip those. All right, it says target URL appears to be union injectable with three columns. Uh, injection not exploitable with null values. Do you wanna try a random integer? Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just say yes. Let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. Again, we're trying the easy way, so let's see what happens. Uh, okay, this is interesting. It now says post perimeter username is vulnerable. Do you wanna keep testing the others? If any in the default is no, and we're gonna say no, because if username, if that username box is vulnerable, let's go with that. So we'll say no. All right, it looks like it tells us right here the the parameter that it was successful with was username. Again, that is right here, that box. Uh, it says, uh, or boolean based blind, that's the type of injection it did. Uh, and it actually gives us the payload that it had success with. So this is really cool, watch this. We're gonna go to the login page over here. Let's erase that. And let's take the payload. We're gonna take the username, which is going to be this right here, all the way up to the and symbol right there. We'll copy that. Let's throw that in here. We'll paste that there. Uh, password, test pass one, two, three. Again, this could be pretty much anything because remember this field wasn't injectable. That's what it said at least. So this could be whatever. Um, so let's paste that and hit login. And by the way, the reason you see it kind of spinning, yeah, there we go, we get the flag. The reason it spun is, look right here, it said that it used a time-based blind query sleep. So this sleep command basically says to pause for five seconds. It's actually a way to, uh, as you get more into SQL injection, it's kind of a way to tell us that uh, without getting feedback, we know because it delayed for five seconds and then it gave us you know, an answer, we know that it worked, right? So let's say this page didn't come up if it spun for five seconds, we knew that, or we would know that the SQL server is considering our query that we sent it. Um, so that worked. Uh, and actually I just realized I, I went with the bottom one on accident. I meant to go with the top one, but either way, there's both options right here. Both of these would work fine. So that's it. That's, that's a very, very, very basic and also complicated at the same time lesson in SQL injection. I'm not gonna say I'm the foremost expert on SQL injection. I'm not, I've got a lot to learn, but hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you got a couple of tips from this video. And at the very least, hopefully you got through the box so you can get to the next one. I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit the subscribe button on your way out. Until next time, stay safe and healthy. And most importantly, which hat am I wearing? Oh, not wearing the nerdy hat. <laughs>